President Donald Trump has rightly come under intense criticism for his initial response to the horrific acts of terrorism that occurred at two mosques in New Zealand. After sending out a normal presidential message that offered his warmest sympathy and best wishes to the New Zealanders in the wake of the horrible massacre, he then started tweeting about Jexodus, the alleged shift of Jewish voters to the GOP, and the Russia investigation. This should never happen to a president again. Trump wrote, conveying where his heart and soul are on this sad day. And when asked by a reporter on Friday if he sees an increase in white nationalism, Trump said, I don't really, I think it's a small group of people that have very, very serious problems. Dot at this point, nobody should be surprised. In numerous times of tragedy, the president has been unable to offer the right words of sympathy. The usual sorrow and anger that we hear from the Oval Office are too many times absent from his lexicon. Back in April 1995, another president offered a controversial response to a terrorist attack by white nationalists, but the debates about his words were less about a lack of empathy than his willingness to give a tough appraisal of the climate that fueled extremism. President Bill Clinton's remarks came a few days after the tragic bombing on April 19, 1995, when Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols blew up a federal government building in Oklahoma City, killing 168 people. Initially, after the tragedy, Clinton offered the familiar kinds of messages Americans expect from their leader, condolences to those affected and assurance that the nation would get through the heartbreaking moment. But then, days later, Clinton struck a very different tone. During an appearance before the American Association of Community Colleges in Minneapolis, Clinton pointed to the angry conservative airwaves and without naming names warned that, we hear so many loud and angry voices in America today whose sole goal seems to be to try to keep some people as paranoid as possible and the rest of us all torn up and upset with each other. They spread hate. They leave the impression that, by their very words, that violence is acceptable. He continued, when they talk of violence, we must stand against them. When they say things that are irresponsible, that may have egregious consequences, we must call them on it. Dot with this speech, Clinton was ostensibly connecting the world of conservative talk radio, which had vastly expanded since the elimination of the Fairness Doctrine in 1987 that required radio and TV stations to present both sides of a political issue to the rapid growth of white militia groups in the 1990s and conservative politics. Although still in its infancy, the Internet had also given rise to sites that served as gathering places for white extremists. Clinton's point was seemingly not to blame talk show hosts or right-wing Republicans for the bombing, but to offer a necessary warning that rhetoric can be dangerous. When hateful ideas are thrown out into the public square, they can inspire unstable individuals to do horrendous things or make organizations of hate feel empowered.